behind me here is the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe whereas this is the 2 Series Coupe here under the bonnet of the 2 Series Grand Coupe the engine sits transversely and drives the front wheels whereas the 2 Series Coupe follows the traditional BMW configuration of a longitudinal engine driving the rear wheels and they are completely unrelated guys so if you're wondering i am recording this video on my way to uh, pick my mother up for her covid19 vaccination so coming back to the 2 series coupe right now bmw has the front wheel drive 2 series grand coupe four door and now they have this 2 series coupe two door that is rear wheel drive so the question is what platform is this car sitting on now because this 2 series coupe is a niche model there is no way that this car would have been sitting on a standalone platform it has to be based on an existing platform you may ask could it be the f30 platform because this is after all meant to be a car positioned below the 3 series right but the thing is that after looking at the interior pictures and also reading through BMW's own official press release it is pretty obvious that the 2 series coupe is developed based on underpinnings from the current G20 3 series as well as its 4 series sibling well of course it's not to say that the parts are interchangeable but the thing is that BMW started off with the 3 series and 4 series of today and further developed it on all right so the suspension design is very much based on that of the G23 series in fact as standard the 2 series coupe will come with what they call lift related dampers you can also of course up spec to what m adaptive suspension if it so tickles your fancy but what lift related dampers do is that the suspension is able to self adjust its damping rates based on the travel of the spring therefore what bmw says is that the suspension is able to self adapt to ongoing road conditions that gives the uh, 2 series supposedly well good ride characteristics at the same time over bad surfaces it is plush enough and this would really depend on how they set it up because based on my experience with the G23 series the 320i stand suspension fantastic all right but if it is the passive M Sport suspension like the 330i I have my reservations When I switched to Pro Mileage, in my case, I got 46-47% of savings oh, for that car. Pro Mileage was the only one that gave me 5,000 extra value to cover, yet still cheaper, a lot less. A lot Turn up! So let's continue with the looks of the car. The front end here, at one glance, you may think that, hey, is this a concept? But no, guys, BMW is really putting this into production. And 
the funny effect that this design has is that one look at it you know it's a BMW but it is a very unfamiliar looking BMW and it is mostly due to its headlights so for the first time in many years this is a BMW a production BMW without the four-eyed look back in the 60s the 70s with the O2 series coupes the 1602 the 1802 the 2002 then later on with the e21 3 series where they had this arrangement of having quad headlights for the six cylinder models and single headlights for the four cylinder models so bmw's official communication makes a specific point to mention that this is a tribute to the O2 series coupes you know once again playing the nostalgic card now the headlights are full LEDs you can pay to upgrade them to adaptive LEDs but BMW is not offering laser lights for the 2 series here perhaps they are thinking that at this segment the consumers are probably not going to want to foot that significant bill to pay for the very expensive laser lights now the double kidney grille is still there of course but it has a bit more of a concave look now thanks to the new active air flaps that is replacing the typical vertical grille design that we've seen in many bmws over the years now you come to the side you will see that the new 2 series coupe follows that classic long engine rear view drive proportion so you see it has very short frontal overhangs and the distance between the front axle and the firewall it's rather long so this is a styling cue that hints to you a big engine sitting in front of the cabin driving the rear wheels and of course if you move further back this is something that i'm sure traditional bmw fans will enjoy a proper looking hofmeister king so whatever that you can say about the front and the back the proportions of this new 2 series to me looks very appealing it's very sporty and communicates the promise that this would be a properly fun car to drive now the back is where it's going to invite quite a lot of debate especially for us malaysians because one look at those tail lights it immediately reminds us of the proton persona and i am pretty sure that the accessory suppliers they are already working over time to create a, a design for aftermarket for persona owners in the future but coming back to the 2 series the surfacing of the tail lights employs 3d effects much like the g23 series whereby the red lighting is given a bit more of a prominent bulge to it but I feel the shape of the tail lights, the top edge of it has a bit of a, a rather droopy effect. So maybe that part they could have uplifted it a bit more to give the rear a, a more edgy look to it. Overall, the looks of it, I think the rear section is challenging. The front end is expressive. I love the side proportions and I can see what BMW is trying to accomplish with this design. It's much like the 4 Series, they are trying to give it a bit of a, I always like to call this the Chris Bangle effect. Remember how with the E65 Series, BMW created a trendsetter in design because until today, like nearly 20 years from its launch, the E60 continues to influence car design across all manufacturers so i think right now bmw remembers that and they want to achieve that effect with their new coupe lines the two series as well as the four series with the big beaver grill okay now inside nothing new to shout about the dashboard this is a familiar looking thing if you have come from the g23 series family this is the standard bmw cabin design template that we are seeing now it's like they just adjust it to size but all the same elements are there the digital cluster is there for the first time in the 2 series you get heads up display aircon control panels look the same the center cubby hole looks the same the of course the transmission control lever with the surrounding i drive controls they are all taken from the parts bin that now spans from the 2 series here right up all the way to the 8 series the x7 flagship is just differentiated really 
by material design and perhaps the width of the cabin. So at the rear, there are seats for two. Can't judge how much room is there without experiencing it ourselves, but added practicality is provided in the form of 40-20-40 split folding rear seats. So let's come to the selection of engines. Now, of course, the familiar family of B-series engines power the uh, 2 Series Coupe, there's the 220D diesel which definitely we won't see in our market. There's the 220i with 184 horsepower. Uh, soon to be launched will be the 230i with 245 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque. So this is a very different engine tune because um, the, the B48 30i engine configuration in the 5 series gets 252 horsepower 350 newton meters of torque but in the 6 series and the 7 series gets and the 3 series gets 258 horsepower 400 newton meters of torque here in the 2 series coupe the horsepower is dialed down to 245 but the torque remains higher at 400 newton meters flagship engine is the m 240i with 376 horsepower from the 3 liter b58 engine this apparently is the most aggressive tune of the b58 engine currently offered by bmw and this variant i'm pretty sure in the future it would be a classic because i don't think after this bmw will make any more small 3 liter six cylinder coupes anymore in fact you know for a car the size 376 horsepower, 3 to 6 cylinder, that is an obscenely powerful engine for this size. This variant comes with X Drive S standard, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, 4.3 seconds. Whichever engine you choose, the ZF 8 speed automatic transmission is standard. Worldwide, there will not be the option of a 2 series coupe with manual transmission and of course some of the romantics amongst us are going to cry about it but fact of the matter is with this new generation of turbocharged engines you are always better off with an automatic right the uh the driving fun of a manual transmission really is only best experienced with old school na engines with you know, with the new generation of turbocharged engines and their large dollop of torque, uh, you are always better off with an auto any day. Uh, there's no mention of this, but I think in the future, they may also come out with a 218i with a 1.5 three-cylinder engine. It wouldn't be very powerful, but the fact that there's a light engine up front and still rear wheel drive, it should make for a very nippy and very agile car. So overall thoughts on this new 2 Series Coupe, I absolutely adore the fact there is still a 3 liter inline 6 that is headlining the engine lineup. So guys, I think this car is bound to be a future classic. And if you look at some of the official videos from BMW, all right and also the way this car is designed the way the the whole product concepts communicated i think this car is really designed with you know fun to drive in mind because you see as the 3 series and the 4 series grows to uh, to become more and more mature products that old school fun to drive thing is is something that will progressively disappear and the 2 series is BMW coming to tell tell us all that guys you always say you want you want the fun driving old school driving fun right and here it is the 2 series coupe giving you that old school fun small body rear wheel drive big ass six cylinder engine go knock yourselves out marvelous artificial intelligence skin